company, and now they're no longer uh, allowed to operate facilities in that state for seven years. So, and that's just one state. I'm sure you know there are situations like this across the country, and that's very unfortunate. You know, every, every day I open an article, and there's something else. I read something about New York earlier. There's something about Connecticut last, you know, a few weeks ago, and um, there are things about California. <laughs> I mean, it, it's all over the country, and I think, uh, you know, that's why I wrote this book, because I, I want to bring the conversation to a, a national level so that people will start to demand better for their loved ones, and ultimately for ourselves. We're all going to be there sooner or later, hopefully, right? I mean, that's the goal for everybody, is to try to make it at least to the elderly age and everything. I know I have some friends that put limits on it, like I have one friend that basically says that, you know, that they, if they're... I think they put like almost a cap at like around 80 or 90, but they're also talking about like the fact that they don't want to live much longer if they're not going to have quality care or if they're not going to be able to be fully functional. So they want to be able to be fully functional and be able to really survive and do things of that nature. And I do know that one of the things that I've been really proud of here in North Carolina is that there's a lot of programs that actually work on encouraging some of our elderly to stay involved. Like we have a group here called the, uh, Dancing Divas, which is actually a cheerleading squad, and they actually oh, cool. are. Oh, I love it. Yeah, and I think the youngest member might be in their sixties or something like that. But they, they have members all the way up until like the eighties and the nineties. They I travel love around. I that. They, hey, listen, I'm in my sixties. Can I come down there and join? I think that would be great. I think they would have no problem with that at all. There's also an African American quilt circle, and most of, that's actually across the age range. They actually have some that are teenagers, but a lot of the major members are actually in their 60s and 70s as well. And there's a jazz band, and I think the North Carolina Jazz Ensemble, the average age is probably around 65 or 70 or something like that. So there's a lot of these kind of groups that seem to encourage people to stay involved and maybe even involved in stuff that they might not have been involved in when they were growing up. But I'm thinking most of the cheerleaders might have been cheerleaders in high school or at least followed their team as uh, fans and everything back in high school and college. But they're just some that are in general just involved. And I think they have one. No, you go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. But I'm just saying, so so, uh, the centers that I see that seem to encourage people more are those that seem to try to want to encourage people to stay involved and to stay active. Would you agree with that, that the ones that are successful are the ones that try to get people active? Because I know there's another center here. And unfortunately, money gets is part of the issue because the better centers, from what I've seen, are usually the ones that also cost a little bit more. Because I know that there's a major, two major centers here, but they bring people to stuff. They 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 have bands, so they bring people to like symphony concerts. They bring people to plays. They bring people to get involved and to stay outside of the buildings that they might be staying in. So it seems to me like. I imagine this is the same case in New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, and even other parts of the country, that the better ones seem to try to keep their folks active. Uh, I would I would agree with you. Um, actually, I, I spoke to a, a gentleman in California several months ago. He has some um, great programs going on. So it, it's not always about money. I think it's about a creative approach and thinking how can you really keep people engaged. So in this particular uh, gentleman it oversees uh, 70 nursing home facilities owned by this company. Now, I don't know anything about the company, but I, I only spoke to him about the programs that he's running. And I'll just give you an example of two of them that really probably don't cost very much money. One of them is that um, every, I think it's at least once a month in every one of these facilities, wherever they're located, the uh, residents go and they help prepare and serve food in homeless shelters. And the, the, um, that is part of a, like a monthly trip or bi-monthly trip, so there's no extra cost. Usually facilities who, you know, have um, – um, programs like that have a van or you know some kind of transportation that right. so that's provided with that and um, the food is provided by the homeless shelter and it gives them such a sense of purpose that they are you know they're interacting with people in the community the people who are receiving the food are so grateful and then they have a purpose and they feel like they're they're doing something for people who need help and uh, it, it's just a wonderful symbiotic relationship. And the other program he described to me was that they have um, they adopt senior dogs, every uh, like rescue dogs. 
every facility oh, adopts a rescue dog, and they have somebody from uh, the a local shelter come and do training on how to take care of the dog. And as many people as possible in the facility can um, participate in taking care of the dog, even if it's putting down water or brushing a dog. I mean, not everybody has the same level of ability or is interested in interacting the same way. Some people can walk the dog if they're interested. Some people just pet the dog. And then when the dog is ready to be adopted, there's one person in the facility that's like a designee, and that uh, whoever wants to adopt the dog contacts that person, and then the facility decides if that's an appropriate placement for the dog. I mean, wow, what a, what a great use of, of, of caring and working with people in the community and then caring for animals. I mean, I just thought it was great. It was just, it just takes creative thinking. It's a mindset. Yeah, and definitely. And there's actually a program similar to that in uh, Chapel Hill, North Carolina, which is a town over for me. But that's the organization, I think they're called Cat Tales or something like that. But it's basically you get to walk into the room and associate with cats, pet the cats, enjoy the cats, and things of that nature. And they're working with a group called uh, the Goat House, and they're trying to encourage people to eventually adopt these cats. But, of course, they check and make sure that your house is – cat friendly and that you're able to actually care for the cat and the cat's right. not going to be abused or whatever. But I just thought that, that was an amazing thing that they have this kind of organization. Um, I think we have one other call, so I want to get that on and expect the phones to be ringing left and right today. But um, Melissa, I was just wondering, how do you think NASCAR is doing in terms of bringing in the elderly to the industry? Because like I said, we had you on earlier and I know that that's a, a target market that NASCAR definitely tries to go after its folks that are uh, up in age and things of that nature. Of course, the drivers are usually younger, but they oftentimes drive well into their 50s and 60s. Oh, they have drivers that have driven into their 70s. Um, I think, well, that is their core fan base. You know, their core fan base is, is becoming elderly now, and they do everything that they can to keep them engaged. Um, but let's face it, you know, attending a race is very expensive, and when you're on a supplemented income, you know, that's, you're taking quite a chunk out of your monthly expenses. It's just, you know, it just doesn't make for a good mix with them. Um, but they gotcha. are still very respectful of their core fan base, and they try to tailor things so that they are still inclusive and that things don't go too far to the left. So um, I thought it was very interesting to see Monster Energy as their title sponsor for the Cup Series because Monster Energy is, you know, high, high energy. You know, they are over, way over the top. And that car is kind of reserved. Um, you know, they need to catch up with times a little, you know, do a little bit more to be inclusive and, you know, <laughs> on, on, on time with things. Um, but I think they need to reach out to the communities because you do have seniors that still, like I said, and I just found out that gentleman that I spoke about at, at the nursing home, my daddy passed away, Um but you do have elderly people that are NASCAR enthusiasts, and and it's the highlight sometimes of their week. I know that gentleman, God rest his soul, you know, he really, you know, he would, you know, really pick up. His spirits really picked up when he was watching a race. And, I mean, he did not take his eye off of the TV. So, you know, maybe it's a program that they need to create to get the seniors more involved or keep them involved in the sport, you know, make it more affordable for them to attend, you know, maybe reach out to the nursing homes or, you know, give them a senior citizen's discount. You know, if I could just add something to that, you know, because the population is getting older, so, that, you know, if they want right. to keep a fan base because – you know, the statistics are by the age, uh, by the year of 2035, there'll be more people over the age of 65 than under the age of 18 in this country. So they wow. have to do something if they want to keep the stands full, you know, and, and keep right. people engaged. Absolutely, 100%. I think that's a great idea. You know, maybe they can, re maybe they can have a senior citizen day or once a month mm -hmm. or something like that. That would be a great, great idea, and people would love that. It would be a great outing. Yeah, definitely. That would be an amazing. That would be an amazing idea. Now, Miss um, Amen, you talked talk about how the society is aging, so that also means that we're living longer. So, um, just in general, just in terms of the way that we care for ourselves, do you think that we're doing a good job, just in terms of general medical care, just in terms of both 
the medical care for our elderly and just also not just the nursing home, but just general medical care. Because it seems to me that every time I turn around, there, there are a lot of cuts in things that are very important to our elderly, whether that's um, hospital visits, whether that's whatever. So it seems to me that we're not doing that great a job, but I was just wondering what your assessment was. Yeah, absolutely. As a matter of fact, I just saw, you know, the last few days I've seen this commercial about how, you know, they want to cut the um, – the uh, allowances for, you know, pharmaceuticals for drugs. And so now, you know, as people are getting older and obviously their income is, is, you know, more, um, um, I don't want to say challenged, but limited, let's say, um, you know, if they if they cut the subsidies for drugs, and then people can they have to decide between buying food and buying their medication. And as people are living longer, they're going to require more medications because you know they have a variety of ailments that happens as you get older that almost can't be avoided. So I think we're not doing such a great job because we're always looking, you know, to cut subsidies. Uh, but the older people or or people who were income challenged in other ways need it the most. And one of the income challenges that I know exists, well, there's two that exist, that I just wonder if you could comment on, Ms. Amen, is that with gentrification, a lot of times, we, you know, of course, you have some housing that is elderly housing, and that's cheaper housing, but not everybody can get into that housing. And then we're also finding a lot of people, like I know one of the companies that I work for, Measurement Incorporated, which is a testing company, we have a lot of our fellow readers, because I'm a reader in that company, that are in their ages of their 70s and their 80s because they still need some, some of good because they just want to get out of the house and they don't want to necessarily stay in the house or they do it and it's almost like a hobby. But there's something to do it because they have to do it because they don't, they have to have some form of income. Yeah, they may get Social Security, but that's not enough to live off of. So they need to have some sort of supplemental income. So it seems to me that we need to do a better job even in the ways that we treat our elderly both in housing and even in the job market. Because I know I want to say that there was a big push as recently as maybe five, ten years ago to get more of our elderly even in the fast food industry. Oh, absolutely. And if you go to store, uh, stores like Home Depot or places like that, you, I see a lot of um, people who are probably retirees, and they, they either work part-time or they need to supplement their income with a, you know, a full-time job. Um, I think it's, it's great if we can do that, if people still have a sense of purpose, but not, I, I would hate to think that people feel they need to do it because they can't survive. Do you know right. what I mean? Definitely, and I think that's unfortunately what happens sometimes. Hey, Dean, did I hear the bell ring again? Yes, you did. Who we got? We got Stafford Braxton bringing them in right now. Thanks for calling Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. Mr. Braxton, you are now on the line. Hey, what's going on, Mark? Not much. I was glad you were able to call me Stafford. Uh, Stafford is actually an entrepreneur as well. Stafford is actually one of the people that created. And, yes, we're all the way in the near springtime, but Stafford during December does the Black Santa Claus here in the area. And I t- he told me that at one point he was thinking about in the years past he's done the Easter Bunny. I don't know. Did you do the Easter Bunny this year? No, Mark, not messing with the bunny. He said he's not messing with the money at all. So uh, what got you into entrepreneurship? One of the things we've been talking about, and I'm sure that you would be interested in both of these conversations, is with Ms. Melissa, uh, Le- uh, LaBelle, um, Ms. <laughs> Melissa LeBron, and I forgot the middle name. I just <laughs> don't have my it's stuff in front of me. It's okay. <laughs> right. It's okay. Sorry about okay. that. So I didn't have the stuff in front of me, my notes and everything. But uh, she's a NASCAR owner. And I know that you're an entrepreneur. She's an entrepreneur. And then the other thing is a lot of times when people come to see Santa, it's not just the young kids. It's some of our elderly that come as well. And that's part of what Phyllis Amen does is she's an advocate for our elderly citizens. So I was just wondering, how did you get involved in entrepreneurship? Because, like I said, you've been doing this Black Santa for a number of years. Yeah. Matter of fact, this will be our seventh year doing it here in North Carolina. And um, I got into it simply because um, there are less constraints when you're running your own business as opposed to having to work for somebody else. And that was the thing that was most appealing to me. Plus that, and you can make more money working for yourself than you can for somebody else. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amen to that. Sure. <laughs> Amen. Well, let's, do a, 
<laughs> yeah, Melissa, Melissa would probably agree with that, but she's also got to invest a lot of money because she's running a whole NASCAR car operation in addition to a record label. So I'm sure that she has to invest a lot. But you also have to invest a lot in your business as well, Stafford, because those cameras you got are not exactly cheap. No.